St. Louis, home of the Blues and the world's greatest pep band, St. Louis University <laughs> Pelican Pep Band. Best. Part so of Friday night college basketball as St. Joe's visits the Billikens here in the Atlantic 10. Keep your eye on number three. He's a multi-dimensional guard, a senior. Big guard. Mike loves to get to his spot on the floor and elevate with his athleticism. Has been knocking down the threes of late. But Mike, this kid loves to play defense. He prides himself each and every game to play against the other team's best player. Yeah, Javon Besson. His assignment will be Charlie Brown Jr., the leading scorer of Philly guard from Philadelphia and St. Joe's. He shoots over 42% from three-point range. Mike Crispino, Mark Plansky. We're just a couple weeks into the Atlantic 10 season, Mark, and there's only one unbeaten team. It's St. Louis. St. Joe's was picked second preseason. The Billikens number one, but St. Joe's been riddled with injuries. This is an important game for the Hawks. Both teams, Mike, do not have the same lineup that they started with November 1st. Tonight's game is all about making shots. Either knock them down from the field or go get them on the offensive glass. All right, we'll find out if the Hawks can handle it without Lamar Kimball, who's been out now with a fractured hand, averaging 16 a game, so it's all on. That man right there, Charlie Brown, for Phil Martelli. Travis Ford coaching the Billikens. They're wearing their road blue at home tonight. It's a blue out night. Everyone wearing blue in the arena. Shavitz Arena here in St. Louis, and we're underway with the Billikens. St. Joe's coming up playing man to man, but I expect to see a healthy dose of 2 3 zone from the Hawks. They pound it down low and they get the first bucket from Hassan French. He could be a factory 6 7, a forward, averaging eight and a half a ball game. St. Joe's the starting five for you. Keep an eye on Jared Bynum, excellent assist man. And if he's working the ball for St. Joe's, they will score. They've had their trouble scoring. Without Kimball, they're averaging about 60 points a game in their last five. So that'll be part of the story here tonight. They're eight and nine as we start play. Coming off a big win over Davidson at home. Well, you mentioned Biden is the one guy for St. Joseph's that can get into the paint. Nice dish across the court to Clover. Who can knock down that shot? And number zero, Jordan Goodwin, averaging 10 and a half. He's taken over the point guard duties for Travis Ford. Done a nice job. Here's a turnover. Hawks on the run. A oh, great tip pass, and St. Joe's has their first bucket. Well, Javon Best would have got a flag for not looking back to the quarterback if it's on Sunday. But what a tip pass by the athletic Charlie Brown. Now Anthony Longpre, the sophomore forward, has the first basket. Now he's got to do a lot of work down in the paint, and already St. Louis going to one of their strengths, Hassan French. Well, you have to do your work early, Mike. That's the second time that French has been able to get the ball deep into the paint. You have to force him out, get in front of him. He's going to dominate if you give him that jump hook. Again, St. Louis fights himself on team defense. Travis Ford is all about playing hard on the defensive end. And a three ball, that would help. St. Joe's tonight, Taylor Funk, and he's been in a funk of late. Last year he set a freshman record with 84 threes, but not lately. He gets one here, that might boost his confidence. Inside out three is the easiest three for a shooter. Battle on the boards, and the Hawks come up with it. Battle on the boards, right? that's the key. If St. Joseph's can keep it to one and done and not allow the Billikens to dominate that offensive class, they have a chance of staying in this game. Charlie Brown in and out. Way down the cylinder, boarded by French. You can see Travis Ford's going to let St. Joseph's come out and knock down the three. They slip behind that high ball screen, daring them to knock down the perimeter three. Uh, two and a half minutes in, St. Joe's by one. There's Isabel. Step back jumper off the front rim. Ball tipped into the Billikens and diving down low and getting the first bucket for him, DJ Foreman. Over senior the forward. Sorry, Mike Logan, an excellent job boxing down French, but no one picked up for him. And back the other way, Jared Bynum. He could score 12 points a ball game, averaging 35 minutes. And these Hawks, Mark, have to play major minutes right now. They are very thin, lost two key players just the other night against Duquesne. So they're going to play some zone. Yeah, they went up to 2 3 zone. Not surprising after the first two possessions, the easy entry pass to French. Now make them knock down their perimeter shots. Baseline jumper by Bess off the rim, but he's fouled. 
Just recently, Phil Martelli lost these two guys. Lamar Kimball, a junior, who played 36 minutes of ball game, average 16. He's got a fractured hand. He's out indefinitely. And Checo Oliva, I mean, how do you describe him, Mark? The numbers don't stand out, but what an important player. Uh, he's just an absolute skilled basketball player. You mentioned 3.7 points per game. Doesn't demonstrate what he brings to this team. And that's a total floor game, high IQ. Great passer at six foot eight, Mike. He was the leading rebounder for this team before he went down. And I know he's back home on City Line watching this game in a knee immobilizer. Checo, hang in there. This two shall pass. You got greener, blue skies. Oh, great drive inside, and a leader goes in that time. Boy, St. Joe's can get offense from Jared Bynum like that. They're going to hang in here. I was going to say greener pastures until Bynum got to the blue paint. And that's the key. If I didn't get to that paint. Best drills run from NBA range. And there are some NBA scouts in the arena tonight. Paul Hewitt, the Clippers, among others. We've got an eye on Bess. And all we talked about is they can't shoot. These two teams are having trouble putting the ball in the basket and knocking down shots early. There's a foul. It's a DJ Foreman ran into. Anthony Longford for the best nine. Good start by St. Louis. And the best thing about seniors, Mike, is they play with confidence. Four feet from behind the line. Clover has his hands down. Count it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott, the official hotel of the NFL. It's mid-January and the conference schedule kicking in in full gear. The St. Louis in the midst of a stretch. They've got five games, 12 days. St. Joe's, six games, 18 days. And Travis Ford said that he hadn't had a stretch like this in 23 years of coaching college hoops. Yeah, he mentioned it's like an NBA schedule. And, you know, you're talking about 18 to 22-year-old young men who love to look at their cell phones and social media. And that's not a lot of downtime to get rest when you don't have that much time in between your Twitter and your ball game. The officials tonight, Lee Cassell, Bart Lennox, Steve Anderson. And that goes out of bounds. It'd be St. Louis basketball. We get a substitution early here by St. Louis. KC Hankton comes in. He's a freshman forward from Charlotte, North Carolina. Didn't play much, about eight minutes of ball game. There's Lee Cassell in front of Travis Ford, his third year at St. Louis. A couple games over 500. Three in and out. You mentioned that Funk always has that three point safety off on the gun, only shooting 11% in conference play. But, you know, he just has to know that everybody wants him to shoot the three, show and go. That's a tough thing. Now, you were a shooter, so when you don't. See the ball going in the basket. How do you get your confidence back? Get down low, get a foul, get to the foul line. The easiest way to get your confidence back is to see the ball go through the rim. The easiest way to do that is a foul shot. And a scramble for the ball. One of the St. Joe's players is down and injured in that scrum just a moment ago. A couple of players went down. Right, let's take a look. Maybe we get a, an idea of what just happened there. Anthony Longbridge looked like he caught maybe an elbow in that, or maybe he hit heads. He's being helped out right now by the trainer for St. Joe's. Back in a moment, 10-9 St. Louis. A moment ago, ball was on the floor here at St. Louis. Watch what happens. Charlie Brown head-to-head -head with his teammate, Anthony Longbridge. Longbridge was down for a good minute or so before he was helped back to the bench and let's see he's not going to come out right now on the floor st joe's can ill afford any more injuries not at all i mean there is no bench on the sidelines there and he's going to have to go through that concussion protocol hopefully everything's okay we see him again shortly my five minutes in chris clover has come in the ball game and that's how charlie brown jr stepped on the sideline well, the Duquesne game will be remembered throughout the season for the game that the Hawks lost some key 
players to injury. Mark Kimball may be able to come back. That's what they're hoping. St. Joe's really does take care of the ball very well. St. Joe's back to the man-to-man -man defense. Good hands with the pe dribble penetration. Going to work in a wild drive and ends up out of bounds that time as Jared Biden trying to make something happen, made nothing happen. Well, exactly right, Mike. When you drive to the basket, you have to know what you're going to do. I'm taking it to the rim. I'm going to draw contact. No, I'm going to think I'm going to pass. Just drive with the intent to score. The rest will take care of itself. But in the corner, Hankton short three. Lodge comes up with a rebound. St. Joe's loves that transition ball screen. They'll come up and in transition, try to get a quick hitter. A good job by St. Louis reading the scouting report. Both teams came out red hot, 8 of 12 by the two to start the game. Now things have slowed down a little bit. A hard drive to the basket, a scoop in and out. Got it around, and a loose ball foul called on St. Joe's. See, that's a great idea by Funk, but instead of trying to make the quick finger roll, use your 6'9", 225-pound body, and just get under control, draw the foul, get to the foul line. The foul was on Lodge. Kill Lodge. It's only about nine minutes of ball game, but I'll tell you what, he had a couple blocks, five rebounds, four points in that win over Davidson. That might have really been a catalyst to St. Joe's season. Things were not going well. And they won by one against Davidson, which came in as one of the best three teams in the Atlantic 10. And what Large brings to this Hawks team is great athleticism. Six foot nine, like, plays above the rim. Very strong body as well. He's going to be tasked against big Mr. French. Shot clock down to 10. Trying to make a move to the basket. And a lot of contact, but no whistle. Hawks come up with it. Alley oop to Lodge, who's right there to stuff it home. Two hands. What a pass by Bynum right in front of us. His head was up. They had numbers, and Lodge ran right to the rim as you're supposed to do. So if you're on the road, Mark, you come out and you're even after about eight minutes. That's a good thing for St. Joe. After a while as well, not making a shot. I agree. Wiley, though, delivers a three ball, the grad transfer from Maryland. Played 83 games there in four years. Average under five points a ball game, and his three gives St. Louis the lead back. Patience, patience against this man to man defense. That's a long three, batted around. Line of fire from a little outside his range. Here comes Goodman. Spins and driving and throwing up the man. He's going to get a chance for a three-point play. Goodwin is the, the guy in the team for the Billikens that sets the table. But when he has to, he'll take it to the rim under control. Nice spin, and then watch him avoid the defender and the scoop. That's a Mike Crispino shot, folks, on the playground. I've seen that way too many times. Now that's Earl. That's Earl the Pro Monroe is what that is. We're going back before your college career. But that was a big bucket and a chance for a three-point play. And we, we talked about... A good one taken over as the point guard as a sophomore early in the season. Tremaine Isabel, during the non-conference part of the schedule, was the point guard. He came back, started conference play, played four games, and uh, Travis Ford handed the ball to Jordan Goodwin. He's done a nice job. Well, Isabel right now covering Bynum. He'll hunt down his shots. He's a true scorer, and I do agree with Travis Ford. Goodwin is a much better all-around point guard. Brown jab step jumper off the mark. Foreman comes up with the rebound. The Browns had a couple of good looks, but let's not forget Mr. Bess is right there playing excellent defense. And St. Joe's back in the zone. Here's another long one from Bess. That's way off the mark. Rebounded by Taylor Funk. <laughs> Travis Boyd had a look on his face saying, okay, you almost were next to me on that one. He checked out. By him. Great feed. Lodge. Crimson at home. That's just elevator going up. I'm like, that's instant vertical. Markel. 
game. He's hit his season average per game right now already in the opening three minutes he's been on the floor. Well, there's one thing about St. Louis leaving him alone in the perimeter, but you can't leave him alone three feet away from the basket with that finish skill. Well, baseline reverse missed by Pess. Good look at it, couldn't convert. Good contest by large on the defensive end as well. St. Joe's just one win in conference, one and four coming in. That one after losing four straight in conference against Davidson. Here's a three, in and out. That's a settle, Mike. St. Joe's, the first five minutes of the game, did a great job getting downhill, getting into the paint. They've settled for the outside jump shot, and that's why they're out of rhythm. Well, St. Joe's one of seven to start from three-point range. St. Louis by two. Here's a three ball. That rims in and out. Way up for the rebound, Troy Holston. Senior guard transferred from USF. And Holston is fouled that time by Goodman. 10 21 left early. Both teams scrapping. Both teams shooting pretty well. And the Billikens lead by a deuce. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. We're back at the Shea Fitz Arena, and we mentioned earlier, Mike, St. Joe's loves the high ball screens. Stop it right there. Three guys covering the ball, and Lodge just goes right to the rim. Well, Mr. Bess, what are you doing way out here covering Charlie Moore? You've got to slide down and pick up that man, give up the three, or you're going to give up the easy dunk when Mr. Lodge goes upstairs. Yeah, Marco Lodge, easy bucket there. Two teams I mentioned started well, four for six, but since then, St. Joe's two for eight, St. Louis two for seven. St. Joe's just one of seven from a three point range. And both these teams don't shoot it that well from three, 33% for St. Joe's and just 31 and a half percent mark for St. Louis. I mean, can they continue to win in this conference shooting the ball from outside that Portland? Well, St. Louis doesn't have a true distributor point guard and we mentioned Bynum is the only guard that St. Joe's has. And what you need on both sides is get to the paint and kick out and might make the extra pass. All, all evening, they're settling for that easy first pass jump shot. That will not get you a good shooting percentage. All right, midway through the first half. If it's Arena here in St. Louis, home of the Billikens. Now on top of the Atlantic 10, here's a drive on a floater that doesn't catch any iron. St. Louis comes up with the rebound. So Jared Bynum trying to force the action. The freshman guard, Largo Maryland. Not able to come up with anything. So we're under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. And I like St. Joseph showing the 2 3 zone, especially when French gets back into the game. Deep in the corner. And it's good. Well, the problem is when your wing is six foot nine, six foot ten, Taylor Funk, he had to go all the way from the high foul line to get to the corner, and he just teed up an easy three for the senior best. Best now leads the way with seven points. St. Joe's trails by five, biggest deficit here in the first half. I think the Hawks have to get the ball on Charlie, or Charlie Brown's hands. Has to get the ball into his hand. Get him on the on the board. And that three-pointer rims in and out from Troy Holston. So the three-point range hasn't been kind to St. Joe's. It's that Wiley fires a three. So it's right now an outside shooting contest. Neither team doing much. That's a bad shot. Travis Ford is not going to like that three. You can always get that one. Duck and move, goes to the left hand, but a rebound is good. Nice work on the weak side that time by Taylor Funk as Jared Bynum able to break down the defense. Got a shot up on the rim, and then the rebound gets St. Joe's within three. Good things happen when you get the ball in yourself to the paint. Offensive rebound, for example, for an easy putback for Funk. You know, against this 2-3 zone, Mike, you want to get the ball in a couple of areas. The logo, the A-10 logo, is wide open. Find it there. And one more time, Javon Best gets open. And one more time, he delivers a three. Great spacing, four out. 
versus a 2-3. Draws up that back defenders, the two forwards, and you have to make up your mind. Am I covering the high wing or the corner? They left Best alone in the corner twice, and he's made them pay for it. The biggest lead of the ball game, St. Louis. Best has 10. Here's Bynum to the basket. Kick out pass. And that one's off the mark. So St. Joe's troubles continue as Taylor Funk hit his first, but hasn't made one since. And I know Coach Martelli wants to see Funk take a show and go on that. Don't settle for the three. Corner three, and that one's good from Dion Wiley. He's made a couple. They're now four for nine, five for ten. And it's a nine-point game just like that. They've made five threes, four twos. Who the fuck it for the Billikens? Mike D'Antoni would be very happy. There's a three, no good. And the ball comes loose. Bynum has it. They're on the run. Bynum goes out the oop, and a dunk attempt does not go from Charlie Brown, but it's fouled. We'll get two free throws when we come back after the media timeout. But Javon Best, we touched on him. He can shoot the three. He loves playing defense, doing a great job. Shutting down Charlie Brown, but give me it again, Mike. Come out and get me. A moment ago, Charlie Brown went soaring to the basket, and in the defense of that play, Demarius Jacobs landed awkwardly. Appears to be his ankle, high ankle sprain, but they were helping him off the court after this timeout. We hope that the young freshman just to, just rolled the ankle and nothing more. Yeah, he's a he's a freshman from Chicago, been playing about six minutes of ball game. We got some high hopes for him though. Right now he's going to go back to the locker room and hopefully it's not too serious. Travis Ford. 23rd year coaching in college basketball, five years at Eastern Kentucky, three years at UMass, eight years at Oklahoma State, now here in his third year at St. Louis. They've won 10 in a row in this building. One more victory in that streak would be the longest home winning streak for St. Louis in this building. Seems like it'd be more than that. I love this building. This is a perfect collegiate arena, about 10,000 capacity crowd. I love the play here. Charlie Brown, 83% from the line, knocks down two. You see the resume. Travis Ford, of course, a great guard at Kentucky. To the final four in 1993. Oh! A baseline attack of the 10 by Hassan French. Yeah, and like all great point guards become great coaches, that was out of the timeout. A set play against a 2 3 zone. They practiced that in the shoot around, and boy, did they execute. That long three by Brown, way off the mark. St. Joe's able to track it down. Holston shot, hard off the glass left. No pass contested shot. And a one pass contested shot is not how you're going to crawl back against this Billiken defense. Do you think St. Joe's has to be more patient, look for better shots? Because they're playing under man, they're missing some offense. Almost 20 points of their offense is gone right now because of injury. You want to take some of the year out of the ball, right? You only have six guys, seven guys, top second play. Take about 15, 20 seconds in every possession, not five, and let them fly from deep. Wiley fires. That was off the front one. Rebound by Goodwin. Kick out. Isabel three. That's no good. Goodwin another rebound. Put back. No. Banged around. Another chance. Four opportunities and finally a foul. Well, we talked about rebounding. St. Louis loves to do it. They're class eaters and they went after it that time. Yeah, you take a look and shoot and go get it. They've been knocking down threes, but you know what? When you've got athleticism and you've got a desire to get the ball, you get on the offensive glass and then get to the foul line. And then this is a set play, Mike, against the 2-3 zone. No one looking, but here comes the high flyer, Mr. French. So good one on the line. He's given the Bullpens their first double-digit lead. It's just unbelievable athleticism. He's only six foot seven. He's got a defensive end type body, and he's a great kid. Very personal kid. It's the last guy to stay at shoot around and work on his low post. I really like this young man. So St. Joe's, who started forward for six from the field, three of their last 16. And a drive in 
inside and the bucket is good. Boy, St. Joe's needed that. Lorenzo Edwards, a sophomore, is seeing some time here. He's only played about nine minutes of ball game, but a key bucket there. They're not going to get the Hawks. Anthony Longpre back. It looks like a possible concussion for him, and he's done for the night. So Mark Plansky, they are really short-handed. Phil Martelli's going to have to coast, or rather coach this one right from start to finish to try to win this game. Well, Lorenzo Edwards is the reason why I'm sitting next to you. His dad, Kevin Edwards, the great oh, oh yeah. two guard from DePaul. Well, he might have been the Miami Heat out playing the guy next to you for, you know, about an hour, and then they come. <laughs> That's his dad. That's Lorenzo's dad. I, I talked about it in the shoot around. What a great young man. Back to a pass, broken up. Hawks was on the move. They'll back it out. Back within eight. You know, now it's all about getting to the locker room, keeping it single digits, so Coach Martelli can have his conversation with his team that's not used to playing. And here comes Mr. Edwards saying, hey, Dad, I'm on national TV. Check it out. I can knock him down, too. And he looks a little like Kevin Edwards, but he's left-handed. There's something wrong there. He looks a lot like it. He does. Well, that smile they had coming down the court. Reminded me of this. You've been on the bench all year long and you're on national TV and you shoot the first two times, you're Kevin Edwards' son. And now Edwards up on defense. They're having some trouble with it here. Now they're down to seven. They get a three off and make it. Say what, St. Louis, Deion Wiley. That's the sixth make by the Billikens already. Six for 13. That's 46 percent. Well above their average. Well, Wiley is the one guy that the coaching staff couldn't wait to get back on the court after being hurt for about six weeks with a late contusion. Well, Edwards missed that one by a lot. An air ball. 31-23. Isabel tried. That's no good. Way off the court. It's right back. Jared Bynum. 40 to go here in the first. Mike Crispino, Mark Plansky. From St. Louis, backdoor cut, and no, it doesn't go. You really have to credit Bess. Javon Bess has taken Charlie Brown out of this game in the first half. Other than two foul shots, he is stuck to him like glue. And Brown 0 for 5. Four of the shots have come from three-point range. And that's what happens when you play against a great defender. You just try to get it up with the kid. Good rebound that time by the little man. Jared Bynum, Bynum on a breakout and a good feed to Lodge, and he'll get two free throws. Now that's a good pass. Lodge was set up by Lorenzo Edwards, and we'll have those two free throws in just a moment. 31-23, the Billikens at home trying to win for the 11th straight time and rising high. Tomorrow, another big SEC ACC doubleheader on ESPN first at 4 Eastern, number 12 Kentucky, number 14 Auburn. Bruce Pearl's got it going. Then Zion Williamson and number one Duke look to bounce back after Monday's loss to Syracuse. The host number four Virginia at Cameron Indoor and a sonic blockbuster also on the ESPN app. You can watch it anywhere. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's wooden watch and some serious players to watch. All right, Mike, three years out. These guys are all going to the NBA. They're all going to get drafted. Who's the best player of these three, three years out? DeAndre Hunter. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I don't know how you don't take Zion Williamson if you're number one pick, Mr. GM, but I have to agree. R.J. Barrett just makes buckets. That guy's a shooting machine, but boy, Mr. Hunter just can score. He's shooting 42% from behind the arc, gets to the rim, plays great D, and he's going to be, I think, a very good NBA ball player. Free throw way short. I just think of Malcolm Brogdon, what he's doing with the Milwaukee Bucks. You think about it. Was he a spectacular player in Virginia? Not really. No. But what a what a basketball player he is on the professional level. Well, he was ACC player of the year, and he didn't do it with any flash, no whipped cream, just all about getting it done. And that type of mentality definitely transfers to the NBA. Hey, you're going to think I'm crazy here, but I think Cam Reddish might have a better NBA career than those other two guys. Hey, Mike, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the best-looking jump shot, though. Are you, do you agree? Now, you're a jump shot artist. You know this. Both of those guys. All right, Cam Reddish can really put the ball in. French going to work in the paints. 
That's what he was working on. And, and after shoot around, right and he's a left-handed shooter, folks, and he's made more shots tonight with his right hand. Hard work, it pays off. Yeah, he's three for three from the field. And six points. Also got four rebounds. Bynum trying to go off balance. Ringed it out, tipped up. No, and here come the Billikens. They do not have numbers, but they're still going to attack the rim. And that's an offensive foul. That is the definition of out of control right there. Well said. The good news is he went north and south. The bad news is he should have pulled it out. <laughs> yeah. That is true. All right, let's take a look at some inside work. Oh, I mentioned Mr. French. I love Hassan. You just can't give him the ball in the paint. Keep him out of the paint. Right hand, left hand, and he's got great footwork and obviously great elevation. Well, this St. Louis team plays defense. They rebound. French four for four. He's got eight points now. And four rebounds. And the Billigan's another ten-point lead. They've been a double-digit lead a couple times. Nate Jones got to be careful here in the final two minutes. As you say, want to go into the locker room, single digits. This is Bynum on a drive, up fake, can't get the shot off, kick out, funk, jumper, no, missed everything. Was not ready to shoot. You have to, and that's going to come with playing time. When you play with Bynum, he's only a, a freshman. You've got to know and create space. As a warning's been issued, as Edwards did not give the ball to the official. That's what an official will do. Steve Anderson was asking for the ball, and Edwards just dropped it at mid center court. The Billikens, a minute and a half left here in the first half. Right on their mark. They average 67 a game. That's good, 33. French, now he goes to the left hand. No good. He'll make that nine out of ten times, though. He's just getting so deep in the paint. Lodge is just not strong enough to keep him out. Bind him for three. That's no good. See, Joe's just can't find the range. Coming up on the E Train halftime report, Chris Cotter, Dallin Cup, Sean Farnham. Will Duke bounce back against Virginia? That's a good question. Kentucky and Auburn, a preview of that one. So stay tuned. Friday night hoops. You become a kind of a legend on Friday nights. You're on every Friday night. I don't know about legend, but it's fun. This Friday night lights for the A-10 conference is quite a show for each and every team that gets a chance to play on ESPN. Fred Thatch Jr. now on the line, freshman from Missouri. It's about 18 minutes game. This is his first action here in the first half. He makes the second. 11 point lead for St. Louis. The other result of taking those quick shots, Mike, and not getting to the paint and getting the defense out of position is a quick transition. The Billikens have done an excellent job of getting it off the glass and forcing St. Joseph's to foul in the open court. Well, there's a foul. As, uh, Charlie Brown, Jr., who averages almost 20 a game, does not have a basket in the first half, Mark. He's 0 for 6, 0 for 4 from 3. Been on the line a couple times. That's been it. So the guy we talked about as a matchup issue for St. Louis has been stymied completely. He's playing against Javon Best, the best defender in the A-10. Travis Ford thinks he might be the best defender in the country. You talk about a young man that when he was a freshman at Michigan State learned the Tom Izzo way and then brought it to St. Louis. And so that's part of it. But if I'm Charlie Brown and I'm Phil Martelli, I get together over a glass of water and say, hey, man, we're going to set you up. I want you to get to the paint and I want you to get to that 10 foot spot Mike and rise up and over the guys don't settle for threes get to the paint and get to the foul line and get that going for well, Martelli four time Atlantic 10 coach of the year last time was in 05 and Travis Ford on his guard Javon best he calls him the best defender in the country when it comes to guards give me a break facts speak for themselves how do you rate defensive players though think about it you don't have the analytics to say well someone shoots 
you know, 45% from three when it's in the corner or when it's on the wing. You don't have that for defense. You, you look at the stat sheet and you say Charlie Brown has two points, 0 for 6, 0 for 4 from three, and who's covering him? Mr. Best, who has 10 points, 3 for 4 from 3, and 5 rebounds. He's having fun playing defense, which is so outstanding. i got to say, I don't know what that feels like, but it's just, to me, it's outstanding, and he's coming down and just freelancing on the offensive end. All right. The second free throw is up and in, so he's got a great-looking free throw at Charlie Brown. You mentioned 83%. Plays 34 minutes. He's led the team in scoring 8 in their first 17 games. Back into his own here. 10 second differential, shot clock, game clock. This is the 2 3 zone that you have to find a man and box up. They're going to penetrate, they're probably going to shoot a three, and you have to get the rebound. Get a chance to get down the other end before the half expires. Jermaine Isabel gives it to Bess. Bess ducks in, fires one up off the glass, it's no good. And that is a shot clock violation. So St. Louis did not get the kind of shot they were looking for in their last possession. A little confusion on the offensive set. They were looking at each other. They were not sure who was going to take the shot, who's going to drive to the paint. So now St. Joseph's has a chance to get to the paint. Von Bynum, try to draw a foul. We'll get the kick out. Try to find Funk or Clover, who's been very quiet in the first half this evening. Yeah, Clover off an 18-point game in the win against Davidson. Made four threes. Hasn't played much in the first half. This is Bynum seeking. Some angle now into the basket off best got a piece of it. It's batted up in the air and that's off the scoreboard and that'll be St. Louis ball. Actually an excellent take by the freshman just did not finish and you can see his body language. He's used to finishing coming out of high school Mike but he's got some pretty big athletic boys chasing him down. Well the Billikens will not throw it up at the end of the half but they will go to the locker room leading 34-25. 10-0 this season when they lead at halftime for Travis Ford. We'll see if they can hang on after the break. Back to the studio. Chris Cotter, Dallin Cup, Sean Farnham for the E-Trade Halftime Report. St. Louis at home on a blue out night leading 34-25. St. Louis, the best defense in the Atlantic 10, really put the clamps on St. Joe's, held them to 29% shooting in the first half to lead by nine, and held Charlie Brown, the Hawks' best scorer, without a field goal in the first half. Mike Crispino, Mark Plansky back with you. We expected this from St. Louis defensively. What does St. Joe's, Joe's got a do do here to really get their offense going? Javon Best, they got to stop him. Yeah, maybe find this guy. Now against the zone, he has found the open spot, but you've got to really credit. Look at that ball whip around the perimeter, and he's knocking down the threes. He's made all the shots have been threes, but more importantly, on the other side, he is just frustrating Charlie Brown. Look at him get over the screen, and then on the ball, you can jab all you want, but I'm in your ear. You know you don't want this. Charlie Brown has not made a shot from the field yet, folks. And meanwhile, Javon Best, 38th time in his career, he's gone into double figures. And Mark, he shot the ball from three-point range very well. He did not make a two-point field goal. Three for five from three, three for six overall. He averages a couple of makes a game. He's already over that with three threes in this ball. Well, a big part of that is St. Joseph's played a lot of two-three zone, so that's what they were giving up. And, you know, that's just the old adage of basketball. Take what the defense gives you. Best has done an excellent job in the first half. Yeah, normally best about half of his field goal attempts are twos. But in this game, only one two-point field goal taken. Here's Isabel on the drive. He ducks in. He missed it. St. Joe's able to come up with the rebound. They got to do a better job of that. They were out rebounding 23 16 in the first half. They started four of six, but after that, had all kinds of trouble. Nice drive inside of the conversion by Chris Clover, who's capable of lighting it up, even though he averages just five a game. He had 18, I mentioned it earlier, against Davidson the other night in the win. First two of the evening for Clover as well. Nice win. Yeah, this is the kind of night that Phil Martelli's got to find some kind of a secret weapon off his bench to ignite his offense. Well, you mentioned Charlie Brown's second half could be that weapon. Let's see how they go down low. French then got blocked twice in a row in the first two sequences, and now who's the foul on? Steve Anderson says it's going to be on Charlie Brown. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They started the game by dumping the ball down to French with great results, but 
he learned first time. Lodge sent it back, so a little show and go. Nice spin move there. I mean, Goodwin trying to flop and get the foul, but it was an excellent move with the ball from Clover. Well, Goodwin misses badly. Now, let's talk about free throw shooting. You were good at it, very good at it, but not this team. The Billikens can't even shoot 60%. Yeah, it's a heck of Billiken evening, perhaps. Maybe that's the strategy to get back. But you know what? More important is you saw Funk get the rebound. If they're going to miss half the shots from the foul line, you better box out because this is a talented offensive rebound in the Billikens team. Wow, step back. That's all the front rim. He's just dying to get a bucket here. French misses again. He hasn't hit the rim in three chances in the second half. It was a good job by Funk just getting in the way and Foreman not skilled enough in the open court to do the Euro step and convert. A minute and a half in. He's down to seven. Low scoring affair. We expected it would be. Funk with a step back. And that one rolls off the rim. Really good job by Isabel taking the ball out of Bynum's hands. He's the one guy that can create, so he denied him the ball. Isabel, he missed the rim. It's official, Mark Glansky. There's a lid on it. For both teams, they're shooting in the 30s. And on the drive, Bynum's going to get two free throws. I mean, they're shooting like they're playing in the 30s. No, <laughs> they're getting down into the lane. You've got to box out. Everyone has been taught. This evening at pregame, you got to box up. And that is a look of incredulity, if that's a word. <laughs> if you're playing Scrabble, you could use it. Well, Travis Ford didn't like what he just saw, that's for sure. I love how Travis Ford coached. The intensity, it just mirrors how he played in Kentucky. One of the most intense point guards, great career, love to play defense, lethal with the basketball, shot almost 90% from the free throw line for his career, and has to deliver the same attitude, Mike, that he had as a player. He expects greatness from all five guys on the court. They come in with a five-game winning streak, four of those in the Atlantic 10, but they haven't been blowouts by any means. Every game's been close. They have five wins in a row by a total of 20 points. Up and down to French, back to Bess. And now they go back to French. The inside outside game goes baseline. They'll be ready to shoot that. Excellent job by French with the inside outside. Another off balance heave from 10 feet away. That's off the mark. Yeah, you can see Travis Ford saying, get ready to shoot, catch, and pass, or let it go. That was an excellent pass by French underneath. Funk. Again, that one's long. Just too quick. One, one pass shots. You know, in a game where you're crawling back, move the ball inside out. Don't settle for that three-point and deep three-point shot. Yeah, what's the hurry, right? He's one for five from three now, Taylor Funk. Baseline drive, kick out French. Dive to the basket, lay in right-handed. Well, he finally breaks through when they get their first basket of the second half. They lead back to seven. Well, it's clear that Travis Ford said to the team, get number 11 as many touches as you can coming out of the locker room, and he's delivering. There's Funk. He's working to Clover. Shot clock down to eight. Biden, he had an open 15-footer. Instead, he drives to the basket, puts it up, and he gets bailed out on the foul. So it'll be by DJ Foreman is called for it. That's his third. Jared Bynum, a 74% free throw shooter, goes to the line. His best game this year, 23 against Temple. If you want to have a great game, you want to have it against one of your city rivals, and he had one. Double figures, nine of 16 games this year. And here's Travis Ford a few years ago. <laughs> 91 to 94. Look at that look in his eye. That's oh, yeah. what his players see every day in practice. 100% intensity. 365 wins in his first 22 years as a coach. In college, got 13 more this year. St. Louis, 13 and 4. Their lead's been cut now to 5. Mike Crispino, Mark Plansky here in St. Louis. The Hawks staying in that 2-3 zone, slow down the game, see if French can single-handedly beat you, and so far he's doing about as much as he can when he touches the basketball. 
Shea Fitz Arena on a Friday night. It's a blue out night. Now, that time they dropped down and double team French. Do you agree with that? Well, you have to because he's dominating. Well, he's not converting all the shots, Mike, but when you do do that, to your point, you're going to leave yourself vulnerable to the inside out, and Travis Ford is over on the sideline pleading for that guy that catches that outside pass, make the next pass. Ouch. That one missed badly. They're, they're at 59% of the season, St. Louis. You just mentioned Travis Ford, plus 90% shooting in his career. Yeah, no, you, you did not foul Travis Ford. It was an automatic two. St. Louis is second worst in the NCAA's Division I, and they are now 4 for 10 tonight, below their average. And that's keeping St. Joe's in right here in the first four minutes. Ooh, a lot of contact, and down goes Lodge. It's the second time Fetch has got physical. He's got freshman has a big wide body and just has a tendency to shed defenders. And you know, Lodge is a good big man himself. And you know, that's a good trick. That's a Crispino trick. When you come off the screen, <laughs> you want to grab the waist. But you know, he's a strong kid and he threw Lodge, who's a, a big stud athlete as well, off balance. But this coming from the Joe Namath of college basketball, the man who predicted victory when no one thought it could happen. Georgetown, the big bullies of the Big East, losing to Villanova in 1995. You were the man. You were the only guy in the country that I think thought that could happen. I was 85, partner, not 95. 85, first of all. I'm sorry. Of course, you're not that young. And there were 22 of us that predicted we would win, and 22 million others that thought we would get killed. We're talking about being outnumbered. Nobody thought that could happen, and that really ignited college basketball. In that tournament across the country, there's a miss. Of course, St. Louis can't find anything right now. I'll tell you what, if Coach Massimino was coaching St. Joseph's tonight, we would be a revolving door of substitutions. One pass and shot, and then come sit next to me. <laughs> All right, Funk's got an alley in the basket. He gives it up this time, and it's knocked out of bounds. And if you could see Phil Martelli's face right now, oh, the pain. It's a five-point game, though. Hawks are right in it. College game day covered by State Farm, live from Duke, Saturday at 11 on ESPN. We have a five-point game here in the second half at St. Louis. Billikens on top of the Hawks. Both teams can't find a basket. They're two for 13 in the second half. The scout report for Funk says make him put the ball on the ground. He did everything right. He puts the ball on the ground. Hey, Taylor, finish, or you're going to get Coach shaking his head on the sideline. <laughs> Nobody does that as good as Phil. He can uh, register displeasure very well. And that time he was unhappy. Funk was three for nine on the day, but he had a clear lane to the basket. Part of that disappointment is he's in the game, and they're making easy mistakes. I mean, that was a layup that Funk should have made. He just didn't attack with confidence. French's inside game has gone south a little bit here. Over for three in the second half. Okay, Brown Jr. still looking for his first field goal. Clover. Baseline. A little give and go. It's intercepted. Billikens two on one, and Brown broke it up. That's a good play defensively. Saved two points. Poor play offensively. Fundamentally two on one with French on the right side. Keep the ball in your hand, Mike. Make the defender come to you and throw it anywhere, anywhere within five feet of the rim, and French will go up and put it down. Don't give him the basketball. That takes all his skill and athleticism right out of his hands. Good one gets it into Hassan French. He's working on Funk. Kick out Wiley. They work the perimeter. Bess. That one short. And the Hawks do a good job on the boards there. Got out rebounded 23 16 in the first half. It's now 29 23. St. Louis. Brown for three. Way short. Chases his own. Missed down. And saves it. Hawks are right in this thing, only down five with six minutes gone by here in the second half. High ball screen, look for Lodge underneath the rim. They're leaving him wide open. He's too athletic, get him a touch. Hawks step back, that's no good. Got it by Wiley, comes loose. Lodge hands to Clover. 
He attacks the rim and lays it in, and the Hawks are within three. That's just a 50-50 ball. That's just I wanted it more, and I love the way Clover tucked it like he was coming down on the AFC Championship and laid it up and in. I really appreciate your concentration with the Patriots just 48 hours away from that AFC Championship game. Not too far from here, Mike. You said you were going to give me your tickets, which have to be on the 50 yard line. It must be. I'll tell you one thing in that other game, there's nobody in St. Louis rooting for the LA Rams. That I've heard all over time. Good one on the offensive pass, and he missed it. Point blank, and the Hawks could tie the game up here. Bynum to the hoop, and he reverses it. It's a one point ball game, and Travis Ford's had enough. He calls timeout, and he is glaring at his team. Well, if you're not making it from the perimeter, Mike, get it to the basket. Mr. Clover, I got the ball. I'm coming downhill. I'm going to wrap it around, and I'm going to lay it up and in. And then Bynum takes it the length of the court. Here come the Hawks, folks. Don't go away. Tomorrow, another big SEC, ACC doubleheader on ESPN. First and four, Eastern, number 12, Kentucky, at number 14, Auburn. Then Zion Williamson and number one Duke looking to bounce back at Cameron Indoor after that loss to Syracuse on Monday. They host number four and undefeated Virginia in a sonic blockbuster. Both are awesome on the ESPN app so you can watch it anywhere and uh, take the train in from the airport today. People are watching ESPN. That was pretty cool on the train. You're very cool. You're just cool, Mr. I like Motor public transportation. transportation. I don't know why. I just do. Atlanta's got a great system. Philadelphia's trains it, right? There's Wiley for three. And he knocks it down. That's what they needed. They had gone one of 12 in the opening. Seven and a half minutes here. And their lead had been cut to one. Now it's back to four. And the reason why Travis Ford was clapping on that possession is the passing. The ball never stuck in and out around and left an open shot. Safe to say that Charlie Brown's having a bad night right now. Still 12-18 left. Isabel, mid-range jumper good. So St. Louis has scored five straight out of the timeout. And they're back ahead by six. I don't know how you can leave a man that open at the top of the zone. I mean, there was no screen, no, no brush screen. He just forgot to cover. Isabel averages 12. He's got just two. That was his first basket. One of seven. Byron kicked back. St. Joe's troubles continue from outside. Two of 18 and another one. Devon Bess and now Phil Martelli's got to stop it because the Billikens have bounced back with eight straight points to extend back to a nine point lead. Well, that's the way to get the crowd back into it. I mean, coming out of the timeout, it was a simple message by Travis Ford. Let's just get everyone involved. Move the basketball and shoot wide open. Mr. Wiley says, I can do that. Watch me. A few minutes ago, it was a one point game, Mike. And then St. Louis said, move the basketball. And open Wiley knocks it down. And then they're always going to play a great defense. It's the best again on Charlie Brown. And now in transition, I'm going to find you. I'm going to reward you for that excellent defense. In rhythm, knocks it down. Now you've got 8,000 people going crazy. And you've got St. Joseph saying, how did we get down nine again? All right, they had missed 13 of 14 the Billikens to start the second half. They made three in a row. And suddenly they're back up by nine. And another turnover. And St. Louis exploding. Great hustle. Jordan Goodwin, difficult layup. And the lead back to double figures. Well, when you're a defensive team and you pride yourself on winning games on defensive end, nothing juices you more than knocking down some shots. The guys in blue are all over it, playing hard defense. And Rick's back rimmed it. And chases it down. He's got 10 points. Just two of seven in the first half, but playing better here in the second. Clover for three, in and out. And French just ripped down the board. Excellent job, boxing Plunk out to allow French to attack the defensive rebound. Six rebounds, the game's high rebounder. St. Louis on a 10-0 run. Midway through the second half. 
They go 5-0 in the conference. Here's Isabel. Drives inside. Before the shot. You know, Mike, when you knock down shots and you love playing defense, look at him get over. Goodwin gets over, and then Isabel says, it's not going out of bounds. And then the finish off balance with the left. I mean, that just really pumps up the whole team. That sequence is not going to get good in the St. Joe's film room. Chris Clover out hustled by two Billikens, and it turns out to be two points. Especially coming out of a timeout. A really important possession when you have to put a tourniquet on it. West tries another one. Good. Another offensive rebound by French. Best now four for eight from three. All his points have been behind the three-point arc except one free throw. Now Wiley. He shoots 26% from three, but not now. He's in two in a row. And this is their biggest lead in the ball game. Well, the coaching staff told us, watch out for this kid. He's getting healthy. Wide him out of control. Did not catch the rim. And the Billikens are flowing. Goodwin, no air ball. And it's off St. Louis. Well, it's time for St. Joseph's to gather themselves. I know as a freshman has to learn, I need to get to the paint. You can't just shoot it from three. We've got to take the crowd out and get to the foul line. And now, a big play defensively again by Jordan Goodwin. He draws a foul. And the Hawks are just being out-hustled. Troy Holston committed the foul. You can't take your eye off any of these defenders. He's looking to see who I'm going to make the next pass to. And Goodwin says, you've got to be kidding me. I'm taking the ball and going down the other way. See when you're on the road. That's the uh, seventh turnover by St. Joe's. They do take care of the ball very well. well they, they do, but as Coach Martelli told us earlier, I'd rather have 20 turnovers trying to create and make assists than no turnovers because we're just jacking up threes. St. Louis now 9 of 23 from behind the arc. French has another rebound. He's got eight. Nine minutes to go. High post going to work. Kick out. He got lots of time here. Isabel in the basket kicks to the open best again, and he makes again. So Javon Bess has been lining it up beyond the arc. 16 straight points by the Billikens. All the great teams, all the great shooting teams trust each other, and he had a basket. Isabel did at the paint in the rim, and he takes wide open decision in the corner for Bess to knock down the three. Missed by Troy Halston. Eight and a half to go. St. Louis mentioned 10 of 24. St. Joe's 2 for 21. And no ball St. Joe's basketball. Nobody wants to score in this game more than Isabel. And he has a layup and he sees his teammate because he's triple team. And the best thing about that is best knew it was coming. Stepped right into it, knocked it down with confidence. And look at how excited the whole team is running back to get to play defense again and get the ball right back. Best with 16 points. And I mentioned all of his field goals have been from three point range. St. Joe's without a point for almost five minutes now. And you know, that's how St. Louis scores, Mike, on runs. When, when you put up a zero for Phil Martelli's team, because of the great defense, when they come down on the other end and knock down shots like the Billikens are doing now, that's their best offensive strategy. St. Joe's lost Anthony Longpre early in the game to a concussion. He will not return, so they're missing him. They're already missing Lamar Kimball, their high scorer, second high scorer, 16 a game. He's out with a fractured right hand. Official's going to look at something here and review it. Let's see what they're reviewing. Trying to see the last foul. Meanwhile, St. Louis has made six of the last nine field goals after missing 12 of 12 of uh, 13 of 14, rather. Here it is. Well, it was uh, the defender, Isabel, hanging on to Bynum. I didn't see anything 
particularly no, wrong with that. That's a common fall, play. right? Yeah, very often, actually, they teach you to go over the screen, make yourself really thin, get your arm out in front. Good job by Bynum getting tight to the screen. That's what you always want to do when you're on the offense. But that's just a basketball play. I'd be surprised if this is nothing more than a common foul. And, uh, well, Steve Anderson is pointing toward the St. Louis bench. Now I'm just going to explain it to Travis Ford. And you know, the only reason why this could be a flagrant one is because it was up around the neck, and the referees are paying very close attention to the head region. It was going to be a flagrant foul, so it's going to put St. Louis on the line to shoot two. And the other side of that is it was a hook and hold on St. Joseph's, which is an absolute point of emphasis, but nothing I saw there at all. I mean, Phil Martelli has a very good argument. I'm not exactly sure if that's in the textbook definition of hook and hold. Well, the officials, you know, given the charge of looking out for that kind of hook and hold call, which we do see, had to make a call because it looked that way. And here's how they viewed the review. They said the St. Joe's player was hanging on to Isabel. He makes the free throws, and now it's a 19-point game, just like that. Yeah, the hook and hold call, folks, is when you grab the arm and tightly grab the arm, almost like you're trying to take it out of the socket. But I don't agree with that. I don't think Bynum did that. I think they just made a basketball play and got tangled up. The last four and a half minutes has been all Billikens. 18 straight points. They lead by 19 now with eight minutes to go. Best thought about it again. He and Wiley have both made five field goals apiece, and they both made five threes. How about that? So the French kick out best. Seven to shoot. And Isabel's got to make it happen. Crossover into the paint. Ducks down low. Best came up with it. And he laid it in left-handed. Talk about accidental offense. He goes down as an assist. And the ball moved about 12 times on offense, so I'm going to bet you in the film room, Travis Ford is very happy with that possession. The usual 25 cent bet. That's okay. as far as we're going. It's okay. Wow, he just can't get anything going. He's old for the game. You ever have one of those? He's old for 10 minutes. Old for Friday. Come on, think back. Yes, you did. I did. Do you but, remember the opponent? Um, it was a Philadelphia team, I'm sure, because big five opponents were no fun to play against. But luckily, my mom says because my biorhythms were off. <laughs> oh, another bomb thrown in by Wiley. Nothing off with Mr. Wiley. He's come out in the second half with an enthusiasm from behind the arc. And this Billikens crowd is in an uproar. What happened? It was a one-point game a moment ago. Now it's 24 with under seven minutes to go, 59-35. Joe Lenardi coming up. He'll talk to us, Joey Brackets, next. Billikens on a major roll, leading 59-35. to Mike Crispino, Mark Plansky, and across the court from us, working the St. Joseph's broadcast, renowned bracketologist, Joey Brackets himself, Joe Lenardi, Joey. What happened here in the last couple of minutes? Hawks were right in this thing. It was a one-point game. I'm pretty sure the Billikens haven't missed a shot since they came out of that timeout that Travis Ford called. Obviously, they went 1 of 12 to start the second half and then lights out. And uh, it's going to be a long flight home, I think. So, Joe, it looks like St. Louis is going to be continue to be undefeated top of the A-10. Where do you see this conference come March in the bracketology? Yeah, I'm not buying all the gloom and doom that we've been hearing uh, from the pundits, myself included, I suppose. You know, this team's been a multi-bid league at least three for 11 straight years. And this time last year, everybody said it was falling back to one bid. They ended up with three because Rhode Island had an at-large resume. Bonaventure came on late, got to the first four, and then, of course, Davidson won the Atlantic 10 tournament. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see something like that happen again this year. Uh, you know, we've got a situation where VCU has beaten teams in the field, Temple and uh, Texas. St. Louis has beaten Butler and Seton Hall. Most of the other at-large candidates from the Atlantic 10 did not perform well in the non-conference, but. You only need a couple to be a multi-bid league. Oh, absolutely. We, we promoted the 
ACC game of the week. Duke, Virginia tomorrow, Joe. You've got them both on the one line. Who else is on the one line? Tennessee and, of course, Michigan, the other undefeated, along with Virginia. And it's really a free shot for the Cavaliers in that game. They're going to stay on the top line in our first bracket next week, guys, even if they were to lose at Duke. The Blue Devils, on the other hand, as the fourth number one, are in danger of being passed by Michigan State, which had just a terrific shorthanded road win last night at a very good Nebraska team. So that means you've got Michigan State probably on five. Who are your number two seeds coming in right behind that one line? If you go in order on the two line right now, it's Michigan State, Kansas, uh, Gonzaga, and Texas Tech. Those first seven ending with Gonzaga, I think it's extremely likely, Mark, that the four eventual number one seeds are going to come from that group of seven. And this is unusually early in the basketball calendar for us to be able to narrow down the field for top seeds this early. But that's just the way it's uh, it's shaking out this season. And Joe, what about the SEC and the way Auburn's coming on and Tennessee and obviously Kentucky's always good. Uh, what do you think of that league right now at this point? I think you're in really good shape when a Kentucky is your third best team and that's the way it looks right now with Tennessee and Auburn leading the way we certainly thought uh, Tennessee would be very very good with everything that they have back but they've been even better than that they're a legitimate final four team in my eyes I'm not as sure about Auburn but Kentucky feels a little bit to me uh, like like the squad they had a few years ago that reached the national championship game as an eighth seed and that they're young and they're coming together a little bit later but they look like they might be playing their best basketball in a month or two which is you know not a bad position to be in and Joe what we've seen in the last few years with all these upsets we're getting now the tournament it is important to be a number one seed a number two a number three but is it as solid as it once was to have those seedings to start the tournament but we've still only had one number one seed lose ever uh, now it's a, a recency bias if you will because it occurred last year with UMBC over UVA um, I think most coaches would say we'll take the best seed we can get because we know our path will be the easiest but then you can have you know a Loyola Chicago last year nearly lost in its conference tournament got in as a double digit seed of course and ran the table all the way to the final four and we're more likely to have tournaments like that going forward uh, because of the parity and and I hate to say this you know being a hawk and with Mark on the air but last year's Villanova team was truly elite with three number one draft picks and the national uh, I'm player sorry of the Joe, year. I couldn't hear that can you repeat that I didn't hear that no I'm not allowed to repeat it <laughs> but but I will say I don't think you're going to see teams head and shoulders above the pack like that very often all right so there's no elite team that you can see right now here as we stand in mid-January just some really good ones, and I think that group of seven is where your champion's coming from. All right, Joel and Artie, you better go back to work. Phil Martell's going to be upset. You got, you got the Hawks game to call. I don't think he's going to put me in the game, guys, and it wouldn't help. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks to Joel, Joel. and Artie. Expert bracketologist. I'll tell you what, a lot of guys do brackets. Come on. How many guys really get it as good as he gets it, as close as he gets it to right? Joe and I were playing golf this summer, Mike, and he was talking about bracketology for 2019. I said, don't you ever take any time off? He said, no, not at all. It's much more fun to do it every day, 365. That was your major at Delano, wasn't it? Bracketology? bracketology? <laughs> you would never guess my major at Delano. <laughs> uh, you could tell me. What was it, phys ed? I'll let you Google it. All right, I've got to Google it. Phys ed. <laughs> that was my minor. That's rude. Phys ed. All right, St. Louis broke it open a few moments ago. They're leading by 20. They've held uh, St. Joseph just 40 points. Uh, traveling violation there. At halftime, it was a nine-point lead for St. Louis. It got cut to one. But the Billikens have stabilized. They lead 60 to 40. A star-studded Saturday full of NBA, college hoops, and UFC on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ABC. Huge day on Saturday. Thunder at Sixers in Philadelphia. That should be interesting. 
Mike Crispino, Mark Flansky back here in St. Louis. The Billikens have held five opponents under 60. Uh, the fewest points they've allowed in any game was 53 to Rhode Island. Meanwhile, St. Joe's has been held under 64 different times. They scored 47 in a blowout loss at St. Bonaventure, 73-47. Right now with 3.48 to go, the Hawks are going to be hard-pressed to get the 50 mark the way things are going. And they came out the first four minutes like they were going to score 80. But, you know, let's not forget, Long Prey went down in that sixth or seventh minute, and there's a big perimeter shooting 6'10 defender, you know, which takes out of your lineup. Plus, you know, you've got two other guys sitting at home watching, and that allows French to come in and get a double-double. Best to score 18. And what I really like about the stat sheet, Mike, 16 assists of the 21 made buckets for Travis Ford's St. Louis Pelicans. That's moving the basketball. That's what he preaches. Only nine turnovers. And there's another turnover by St. Joe's. That's their ninth. How about this? St. Joe's started this game four for six. Both teams did. St. Joe's since then, nine of 47. Do the math on that. That's something like 20%. Little pick and roll, kick out best, doesn't shoot it. Skips it across court. Now they're down to five seconds. Isabel's got to see that. And he will step back and launch. No good. Rebound. Taken down by Edwards. Renzo Edwards. Forest, Illinois. And Large has played pretty well. Lodge, Markell. The ball game now has six points. And immediate timeout here. Under three minutes to go. St. Louis in command. Sports Center tonight following the Warriors Clippers and after the buzzer with Stan and Neal, they'll look at how Boogie Cousins changes the Warriors offense. Plus, why protecting Jared Goff could unleash the Rams offense. And Patrick Mahomes talks about his plans to attack the Patriots. Sports Center, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. I'm sure Bill Belichick will be staying up late to watch that, how Patrick Mahomes is going to attack the Patriots. Well, you know, Bill Belichick and Phil Martelli have been preaching the same exact thing for the last few weeks. Next man up. Because of the injuries for St. Joe's, he's been going all the way down to the bench. The only one for St. Joe's who did not play this evening is Joey Lenardi. I mean, he's the next guy in. So you've got a depleted roster, but to your point, Mike, how did they go from so good the beginning of the four minutes to nine for the game? 47 the game it's because they lost patience on the offensive end I mean, when, you're, when you're playing with guys that are not used to playing with each other and you're in the game for the first time on national tv you get nervous you get caught in mouth and you want to score because all these young players think they're only good if they put the ball in the basket meanwhile st louis has been dominating on the defensive end as a team they're the best in the conference tops in the nb in the ncaa and when you play great defense you play fun offense and that leads to some great kickouts and some easy baskets well, the billikens allowing 63 points in all game Their opponents well below that here's isabel in some trouble now they beat the pressure two on one and uh, layup no good by goodwin but he will draw a foul coming up after Basketball, we're off to the Australian Open. It's summertime down under, so uh, I know you can appreciate that. It'll be 30 degrees when you go back to Boston. We probably snowing. You know, way back in the day, we played the Big East All Stars down in Australia. PJ Colissimo was our coach, and we went in June. It's on the opposite. It was cold. It was cold, right? It's like it is right here in St. Louis. Yeah, I've never been to Australia. It's a ridiculously long flight. What did you do for 26 hours? Uh, we went from Newark Airport to Honolulu. That's an 11-hour straight flight. And Honolulu to Sydney, another 11-hour direct flight. So we watched about eight movies and then had 10 hours to kill. <laughs> and I know you're a... a scintillating conversationalist, so you probably had a lot of conversations with PJ. Ironically, everyone sitting in my row slept the whole way as I just touched my whole way. Three-pointer missed again. St. Joe's just going to fire from outside the arc now. They finally get one from Bynum. That's only their fourth. Four of 26 on the game. St. Joe's not going to fix their Offensive problems anytime soon. 
unless they can get back, perhaps Lamar Kimball. But he's got a fractured right hand. And Mark obviously lower body injuries; those are bad in basketball. But hands too. Come on, you got to handle the ball. And he's weak by week diagnosis. You know, Phil Martelli. We talked about Checo Oliva who's watching this game back in Philadelphia. You talk about a guy who loves his players. Oliva comes out of the hospital after having a terrible knee injury and coach Martelli stayed with him in the hotel and then when they got off the flight from Pittsburgh Checo stayed at coach Martelli's house all Sunday Sunday night until he got him back to his apartment Monday I mean this is the type of guy that Phil Martelli is hey it's hard for any coach to coach a team that you lose five guys in one season but he's a never say die and a great dad and a great father and a great coach he had injury issues last year ended up 16 and 16 we got to the Atlantic 10 semifinals and a couple of years ago went 28 and 8 2015 and 16 it's Isabel running time off the clock and all intercepted by Bynum this kid's going to be good Mike Bynum is going to be a real good player in this league three, three pointer from the corner went off the backboard first So to recap the injury issues, that is Kimball right there. Mark Kimball, the junior guard from Philadelphia, injured his hand. He also lost an important player here tonight, Anthony Lockery. Concussion as he ran into his own teammate, Charlie Brown, in a scramble for a ball. So we don't know, I mean, St. Joe's doesn't know how long it would take him to come back from something like that. You know, the other uh, side effect of this Mike is that coach Martelli only has six seven players to practice with so you, it's hard to run a scout team with walk-ons and assistant coaches you know it, it, get ready for the athleticism and the intensity that a st. Louis Billikens presents when you get on the court yeah, that means uh, Mark Bass and David Duda and Jeff Arnold the assistant coaches are gonna be suiting up sweatpants and sneakers over the next week or so and 23 left 16 point game and I'm able to get to the basket. They go to the line. St. Louis tonight, 10 of 20 from the line. St. Joe's 11 of 13. There's the assistant coaching staff, and they have to break out the sneakers and the sweatpants and start handling basketballs. The problem is, unlike Travis Ford's assistant coaching staff, that could probably beat a lot of college basketball teams led by Phil Forte, the great three point shooter from Oklahoma State. Phil's got a lot of elder gentlemen like yourself, Mike, sitting over there. <laughs> You know, that's been with him for a long time. I don't think they want to strap on the sneakers and get up and down the court. You need to be kinder to older people. <laughs> Anybody ever tell you that? More and more. <laughs> well, what a, a night it has been on the negative side for Charlie Brown. We talked about him before the game. The guy averages almost 20 games. He's kind of field goal in this game. So, uh, the pressure really on a guy like that when you think about it we talked about it before the game when you know you got to score 20 that might be the toughest assignment for anybody no absolutely and you have to credit your arm best right i mean we talked about what type of defense he can play well serena williams getting ready 23 time major champion she'll play yastremska her second major appearance down under amazing what she has done later in her career think about it mid still winning grand slam championships remarkable and there's best right there i mean we mentioned at the top two hours ago he takes great pride in shutting down the best player every evening from the opponent guess what zero for friday for charlie brown and javon best comes out knocks down 18 points because he's one of those quiet leaders by example. He's not a big vocal rah-rah guy. He just gets the job done. Javon Bess, of course, came from Michigan State, transferred after two years there, played in 32 games at Michigan State. Really didn't make much of an impact. Average three points a ball game, but it's made a big difference for St. Louis. You talk about plus minus. We meant, you just mentioned he's got 18. Charlie Brown's got four in this game. As I mentioned, when you're playing great defense, it's really fun to come down and let her fly. And this is early in the game. Look at that ball whipping side to side against that zone. And Best, the recipient of three wide open threes. And St. Louis came out in the second half, and the ball was sticking to the players. It got into the paint to French a few times, and he did not convert. He wasn't making the pass back out. 
Coach Ford grabbed him around the eight-minute mark after the eight-minute mark and said, hey, get that ball whipping around like it did in the first half. You look up, and it was a 20-point game. So the officials take a look at that last sequence. Bess and Wiley have combined for 38 points for St. Louis. Here is what happened under the basket. Uh, maybe they're thinking that Isabel swung an arm out on the foul. I'm not sure. And they are explaining that to Travis Ford. It's a flagrant one on Tremaine Isabel, the graduate transfer from Drexel. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there it is. He, he hooked him around the... So we'll get two free throws now for St. Joe's. Not a hook and hold. That was the swim move that we're going to see on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the swim move from the defensive line. Just right there. Is this going to be Gronkowski's right last game? That's a serious question. That is a serious question. I mean, with all his commercial obligations, he, could, he could walk away right now. I'm going to say it won't be his last game. Could be his second to last game, but it won't be his last game. Well, you have to be ready for anything. Patriots don't win away from home in the playoffs, right? It's more difficult on the road. You know the Chiefs fans are going to be crazed come Sunday evening. It's going to be a great game. All kidding aside, I, I think uh, Mahomes is as good as it gets. I mean, he should be in the MVP conversation. What he has done with that team from the quarterback position, remarkable. Now here's the thing. The Patriots have seen him once. I like the, I like the pass changes. Now the Billikens finally a drive inside by Brown. He hasn't done that much tonight. He's going to get to the line again, but Mark, before the game, we talked about him averaging 20, but unable to get a field goal. He's going to get more free throws. Five fouls now on Goodwin. He'll go to the bench. He looked up and saw Bess wasn't covering him. Got excited. Excited. I can take you to the right to the rim. So the Billikens now are going to go 5-0. They're going to win for the 11th straight time at home. That ties an arena record. How good are they? How much of a threat could they be come on? Well, in the A-10, I think they could be a real threat. I mean, they're not going to go undefeated in the conference. I think there's great parity in the Atlantic 10. But the problem with the Billikens going deep into the March tournament is you're shooting 59% from the line. You know, you don't have great guards, and you don't necessarily have a great senior team. And when you're missing the potent offensive side from the guard position, and you can't close out teams because you're susceptible at the foul line, Coach Ford knows that he has to win all his games from the defensive end first. And as those 64 teams whittle down, the guys that end up in the Sweet 16 round can all knock down the shots from that guard position. St. Louis has been uh, in the tournament three times, uh, nine times, I should say. They went three straight years, 2012 to 2014. They do have a national championship. In 1948, they won the NIT, which at the time was the preeminent tournament. Easy Ed McCauley led the way. A nice pro career. And what's great about that is 1949 was the first year that the AP poll came out. So the first ever number one seed we're right here in the St. Louis Billikens as we've got a couple of number one seeds going tomorrow with UVA and Duke. But, I mean, does that mean it's been a 70-year drought between number ones? <laughs> uh, maybe. Isabel throws it up to beat the shot clock and knocks it out of bounds. So 45 seconds remaining in the game. Well, Travis Ford has the experience himself as a player. Went to the Final Four in 1993 with Kentucky. So I, I know he knows what it takes. And I know it's an era of offense, but I like defensive teams in the tournament. Off defensive teams can do some damage. Absolutely, but let's just look at this. You, the St. Louis team screams, I'm going to play zone against you because you can't shoot. And I'm going to follow you at the end of the game because you can't make foul shots. Now let's lay in the Jim Beheim Syracuse 2-3 zone against this Billikens team. How are you going to score against that lane? and that athletic talent that knocked off Duke at Cameron Indoor. That type of matchup would be the worst matchup for this St. Louis team. And remember that Syracuse win, as great as it was, it was a great game. It was, it was accomplished without two of the three best players on the floor for Duke. So if I'm Mike Krzyzewski, I'm not thinking, I'm not worried so much about that loss. But if Virginia comes in to Cameron Indoor and wins 
on Saturday, then there's some concern from Blue Devils. Well, to your point, Trey Jones is expected to be out again against Virginia tomorrow. But the difference is R.J. Barrett's had four days. That was a Monday game. He's had four days of practice learning how to play that point guard position instead of getting thrown in prime time in the middle of the game, which is what he had to do. And, you know, of course, you had, you, you had Reddish out with the Colts. So he, he didn't play. I mean, now Zion put down 35 points and 10 rebounds. He did everything he could. And, of course, because of that, he was exhausted at the end of the game. So they lost on Monday. Coach Case had four days of preparation. I think it's going to be an unbelievable game tomorrow. The four days to learn how to play point guard against the Virginia defense, so that's not an easy assignment. Fair point made by you for once. Once in a while I get one in. Brown in the corner. Now he makes a shot. That's his first field goal of the game. 63-54, 33 seconds left, nine-point game. And the never say die attitude of the Hawks. Full court press. You know, folks might be saying, why didn't you put it on earlier? He's only got five or maybe six healthy athletes. You can't play 94 feet and get outrun yourself. Best is fouled there. Brown. Best will go to the line. How about Javon Best? Now, you've seen him in person here tonight. Senior guard. Transfer, as we mentioned, from Michigan State. Pretty good night tonight, 18 points, made six field goals, five from three. What do you, how do you rate his game that you've seen? Well, you know, NBA loves defenders too, Mark. So he can obviously play defense and can probably love, play defense on the next level. But at his height, he has to be able to really knock down that three consistently. And he's probably just not explosive enough with the basketball. You've got to be able to create your own offense from the guard slot in the NBA. But he's a real solid college player. That's off the mark. Taylor Funk had a major struggle here tonight. Four for 13, four for 14 from the field, two for nine. And a drive to the basket by Isabel with seven seconds left. And Bynum is really upset. Thought they might run the clock out. And now the officials have to step in between these two teams. I mean, it's become a tradition at the end of a game, you don't shoot the ball, right? except when somebody shoots the ball and then everyone gets upset. Well, there's been two flagrant one fouls and it's been the matchup between Bynum and Isabel. So that tells me that there's been a lot of jarring going on and that is what happens when you've been jarring all night long. You know you should let him go, but you don't. You create a silly foul and that's just you. So that is immaturity. Bynum's a great player. He's going to learn that there's another day to fight. And then here was the aftermath. And French was in the middle of it. Pistols did a nice job of getting right in between everybody, all three of them. And that's what you need, really. You need all three involved. Yeah, and I also uh, need French in between on my team. I don't want to have to go against him <laughs> if I'm on the opposing scrum. scrum. That would be no fun. And there he is. Hassan French, he's 6'7", 235. He's got a muscular game. Played well tonight, 10 points. And he got him early. Kind of set the tone a little bit in this game. 11 rebounds for him. He's played 36 minutes. Travis Ford tonight had five players play 30-plus minutes. And Phil Martelli had two players, Brown and Bynum, play all 40 minutes. It's kind of the way it has to be. So Isabel's going to go down and shoot free throws with three white jerseys standing around him. Bynum to the front court for three, and he makes it. That's going to count with .7 left. And that will make the final score 68-57. to 57. St. Louis wins for the sixth time in a row. 11 straight here in this arena, and that ties an arena record. Travis Ford talking to Phil Martelli. I'm sure explaining he didn't tell that player to shoot the ball in 10 seconds left. Once again, the final, St. Louis 68, St. Joe's 57 for Mark Klatsky. I'm Mike Crispino. Coming up next, third round live coverage of the 2019 Australian Open. So long from St. Louis.